Welcome back to Accessible Gourmet. Today we're making butternut squash gnocchi with sage brown butter sauce. Here's everything you need to make this dish. Let's start by making butternut squash puree. Before we start anything, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Take a one pound butternut squash, cut off both ends, and split it down the middle. Clean out all the seeds. Place both halves skin side down on a parchment lined baking sheet and drizzle with one tablespoon of olive oil. We're going to cook this for an hour and a half or until it's soft with some brown spots. While the squash is cooking, let's work on the potato. Peel and quarter one russet potato, put it in a pot of salted water, and cook until fork tender, or about 20 minutes. We're going to press this through a ricer. If you don't have a ricer, you can use a fork. Just don't compress the potato too much. We want to keep this as light and airy as possible. Set this aside so it can cool. When the squash is finished cooking, scoop out the insides and put them in a blender. Blend this until we have a nice, even puree. Transfer from the blender into a pot, and over medium heat, we're gonna cook this for about five minutes or until it thickens and, or most of the moisture has evaporated. Once that's done, we're gonna let this cool as well. We're gonna transfer these into storage containers because we want them to sit in the fridge overnight. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. I took these out, I took the potato and squash out of the refrigerator half an hour before I started to assemble this because I want it cold, but I don't want it shockingly cold. So in a large bowl, we're gonna mix two cups of loosely packed potato, one cup of tightly packed butternut squash puree, three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese, one and a half teaspoons of nutmeg, our salt, and one beaten egg. We just want to mix this together until everything comes together and is smooth and then we're going to gradually add in our flour. I do this in increments because I want the flour to hydrate with the wet ingredients before I add more. If it's a little sticky, you can add more flour by the tablespoon, but once everything's combined and kind of come together, we're going to turn this out onto our workbench and knead it gently. Once your dough is nice and smooth, we're going to portion this into eight different sections. Using one portion at a time, we're going to roll our dough into a rope that's about a half of an inch thick.
Once it's rolled out, we're gonna cut this into three quarter inch pieces. And you can either make the standard gnocchi uh, marks with a fork, like I'm doing here, or I actually have a gnocchi board. It just makes it faster and easier. We're going to put all these on a parchment lined floured sheet and loosely cover it and throw it in the fridge for about an hour. Once your gnocchi is rested for an hour in the fridge, we're going to cook these in salted water. Um, I cook these as a general rule until they float, because once they float, for me, they're cooked, but test them. Some people let it cook a little longer, um, but yeah, definitely take one out and taste it. If it tastes a little wrong, throw it back in. If it tastes fine, you pull it out, put it back on that parchment lined baking sheet, and let it rest while we prepare our sage butter sauce. Over medium high heat and heavy skillet, we're gonna add one whole stick of butter. And we're gonna stir this around. It is gonna bubble, but don't get nervous. It's just the milk fats um, and the, the water in the butter just kind of evaporating. So we wanna cook this until it's golden, um, but you need to, you can't walk away from this. You need to stand and kind of babysit it because you need to stir it often. It's gonna take about three or four minutes. Once it's gotten to a nice golden color and you can smell almost a nuttiness to the butter, we're gonna add our sage, which I've chopped up. Stir this for one minute just so the sage fries because raw sage is not good. It, it doesn't smell good when it's raw either. So that's probably the way it's going to taste when it's raw. So you definitely want this to cook. We're going to add back in our gnocchi and let this cook to five to seven more minutes. Stirring often. So when I plate this, I Use a slide spoon and put the gnocchi in first, and then I drizzle the brown butter sage on top because sometimes if you dump the whole thing there, it just gets to be a little too much butter. Not that that's ever a bad thing. But yes, so this is how I plate it. And there it is, butternut squash gnocchi with brown butter sage sauce. It's absolutely one of the best things I've ever made, and I hope you guys make it too. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button. If you loved it, subscribe because I put out new videos every week. Until next time, happy cooking.